I, I think if it's different, if they're different um, divisions, like if it's East against oh, West, shit, boys, we're like on. East we're against on. American. Oh, were we on? This is coming on live. I'm yeah, priorities. great guys. Uh, good start. <laughs> Welcome <laughs> back, you idiot. What did you to say what the duck? God, you can you guys really there. not hear me when I said we're starting in like twenty seconds? No, no. stupid. <laughs> oh, that's my bad. Sorry, I'm doing production today. I don't know how JJ wires all the audio because I I thought you guys could hear me that whole time. I was giving you little countdowns, little cues, like all right, guys, thirty seconds. All right, ten seconds. Okay, everybody, stop talking. <laughs> we're starting, and then I unmuted, and you guys were talking about baseball, and I decided, well. That's as good an intro as any. We I thought it was like the, a troll uh, segment thing. about baseball, if you want. I mean, well, yeah, I mean, I thought you guys were just trolling me. It was like a practical joke. At the Halloween no, party no. I was at last night, this girl was like, "Okay, when someone walks into the room, let's all pretend to laugh, but make it really real." And of course, I fucked it up, and within two seconds, they were <laughs> making fun of me for my fake laugh. It's a hard challenge. <laughs> all right, no, 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 hold on. Before we go any further, I need to hear this fake laugh, please. I can't. Oh god, it was just like. Do it. <laughs> don't don't, don't <laughs> see how much pressure I already. That's it. It was it was probably a little more enthusiastic than that because I was a little I was uh, sipping back on Grandpa's old cough medicine, but uh, yeah, yeah, it was pretty bad. It was atrocious. How do you? I mean, who who says that? And I had like like ten seconds to be like, okay, oh shit, fake laugh, and then they all just started laughing, and that's not my style, man. What is your style? I'm curious. Give us a rundown on Zyori. So Ted, for Halloween this year, I wore UGGs. The Starry Night leggings and my North Face hoodie, and then I have my Vera Bradley backpack. And the joke is that they're just all my normal clothes. So yeah, I was gonna say, they're like, no bother what, with a costume. So there. most people just thought that I was a college age girl, which I think was pretty, pretty appropriate, pretty accurate. But I did make some people uncomfortable because they made fun of my, what I was wearing, and then I told them they were my normal clothes, and they didn't really know what to say. <laughs> they just kind of backpedaled. <laughs> So it was what are you dressed one. as this year? I'm a douchebag. <laughs> Thanks. Slime. I'm just kidding. That's, I'm just that's kidding. kidding that's a, oh, that's great. So what's up, fellas? We got another uh, week that's gone by here. It's the first day of November. October was yesterday. Nan Yang finished this morning. I know all of us watched it and took diligent notes. Purge, did you actually watch it? See, the problem is that most of the games started at like 10 to 11 p.m. And I usually go to sleep by like midnight. So You're and then I'd wake up in the morning. Man. I, I really wanted to watch it, honestly. Like I, I was enjoying some of the games that I watched. I could watch. I stayed up one night till like two and watched games and played uh, Gem TD. But I I missed almost everything else. I was gonna watch some replays this morning. So I'm Blitz the is like, expert this time, go. huh? Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah man. Counter Strike always. Yep. You are the expert today, Shannon. The tides have turned. I only Actually, watched two games in the grand finals, so that was the oh, first good. two. Oh, good. I watched part of Game Five in the finals. I saw Secrets Meepo is getting getting shut down a little bit. The Timber Saw Ice Three coming out. Yeah, big, that's a good pick. Big Agonims plays. I th uh, the Raid King in counters. Game 2 was pretty awesome by NB. I really like that. The what? The old Radiance build on Wraith. Uh, yeah, oh, you on Radiance? Well. I love that stuff. That's what I do every game on Wraith King. 85% win rate with Wraith King, by the way. Wow. You're just Strength Master, man. That's, well, shit. That's all there is. You're going pro soon. Don't let wait, anybody wait, wait. tell you different. You, you have an 85% lifetime. No, not lifetime. Okay. Uh, I can actually, what do you, let, let me what do you like saying? Over the like last seven week. games? Wait, yeah, no, like <laughs> Wraith King has changed so much lately. All right, hold on. Hold on. Yeah, tell us which patch, because it's important. All yeah. right, I can look at the last six months. Yeah. Wraith King, 83.3% with 24 matches played. Get the fuck out of here. What? Damn. That's right, bro. That and I, like the funny thing is, statistic. I don't ever change my build. It's always exactly the same. I go safe lane, I get treads, blink, I start shitting on people. I get Radiance, and then the game's over. Every time I get Radiance, the game's build. over within five minutes. That's I want to read honestly. this guide. Blink Dagger, shit all over him, then just farm up a Radiance. So, actually, I have a question for Purge. Uh, since, I mean, you didn't watch this specific game, but I, obviously you know the build. He, I've noticed that the Wraith Kings, instead of doing that exact build, they go Blade Mail first. I usually get it like third. Why do they go Blade Mail first before even getting Blink? For the mana, I reckon. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't agree with that personally. I, I, I do. I, do. I was I was reading, dude. I was reading this Reddit thread this morning. It was about the Chinese. It was Zhao Wei's stream. They were commenting on the tournament, and they were all flaming envy for the blade mail as well. Oh, like okay. like the blink just gives you so much. Like you can blink stun on so many heroes that are evasive. You can blink after you ulti. There's like like that 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 alone is amazing. Like yeah, the blade mail is cool because you can like activate it, reflect some damage, die, and then you come back and you activate it again or something. But yeah, I, I just don't like it. it. Depends on the heroes, I guess. Like if they have. Uh, if it's like a Leshrac, I guess you could definitely go for a Blade Mill first and say that that's worth it. But 
If it's anything other than that, I wouldn't the recommend great, The great first. thing about Wraith King is because he only has one active ability, you can actually focus on your other stuff. Like, actually, tread swapping is pretty easy because you don't have to worry about all this other shit. It's good. It's a good noob hero, for sure. That's what it takes? You need only one skill and then you're ready to tread switch? And wand. I actually use wand occasionally. Way! Wow. Go. wow. That's pretty good. <laughs> wow! That now 4K I see bracket, like man. It's King. getting out of control. <laughs> I think that's okay. why Slex is higher MMR than you. What? Damn, no, he's my not. wand power. Isn't he close? What's your yeah, MMR? Where are you at right now? Shannon Four hasn't played a ranked game in like two oh, no. years, so I don't know no, if these numbers are accurate. Forever. All right, well, we should stick Lex? to. No, no, no. What's Lex? I don't. I don't know anymore. I think I'm four six, so I'm right there. <laughs> I, I don't really? know. I just. I just forgot. I, I kind of. All right. You know what? You're gonna have to post. You know how you can post your MMR? Yeah. On your profile, you're gonna need to do that for for proof. Okay, can do. Wait, you, you know, you're talking to the world's 25th best Omni Knight right now, so. Watch out, bro. <laughs> I'm like by what metric? Now is that by win rate? Is by that Dota by buff, ultimate bitch? miss? Dota or buff. okay. Yeah. Now I had this fan, this guy, and he was like, "Slacks, you're 25th best Omni Knight, and I'm 31st." And I'm like, "Cool, man. I didn't really try or anything." And now he gives me like <laughs> daily updates. He's like, "I'm eighth. I'm seventh. <laughs> Slacks, I'm fourth. I'm so much better than you." I'm like, "What?" Yeah. Here's here's the thing <laughs> I've noticed about Dota me? buff rankings. I was sixth with Centaur. That's the highest I've gotten. Yeah. And then people started playing him, and now I'm 200 something. So how does so it measure it though? Nobody plays Omni Knight. Overall game impact. Uh, overall game impact. Is that like? I have no idea. It's probably it has, just fake. No it has some like shit. special concoction of numbers, and okay, because if you just did it by high, like obviously Slex is not the 25th best Omni Knight. What? It weights it by, <laughs> it, Fuck it you, not, Purge! It weights Fuck it you. by your MMR bracket. So if somebody's like god tier <laughs> Omni Knight at their 2.6k bracket or something, like completely, it's like. If somebody was like god tier at Omni Knight, but they were ass at every other hero to the point where it made their MMR low, they'd probably be like the highest ranked Omni Knight. What? Like, <laughs> yeah, that's not true. a no, that's definitely abuse true. It like that. Totally. Like honestly, it, and there's no player that's below like 4.5k that should be top 100 on any hero, because I guarantee what? that there's <laughs> thousands of players that are better than them at that hero already. I mean, win rate is a huge deal, and then guys, Slack's I've noticed, confidence I don't know if is just melting as we speak. He's just like, oh, I thought okay. I was actually the 25th honestly, best in the world. He's too no, confident as it is anyway. Yeah, but uh, kill to death is, uh, I've noticed, at least with Centaur, is a huge deal. Like, I'll get Radiance and shit on people and I'll just, like, spike up. I don't know if it changes per class. What is with you and Radiance? Or what, but... Is Dude, Radiance just... is legit on strength heroes. Sunspan's just a Radiant kind of person, you know? I mean, he just, he glows. Maybe it fits that's his alternative it. lifestyle, that's for sure. Wait, can you read this, Slacks? What? Hold on. Hope to read? Can you read the red? I can't read the red. Oh. It says love. I pooped. Okay, it's okay. faded out. What is wrong? Can we stick on target? Cool, here? cool <laughs> okay, shirt. So... No such thing. Come on. Dang Yang ended. We all kind of watched it. Not really. Some of us didn't watch it at all. Vici got um, second. That's right. E uh, Secret got first. Good job. E E wins his big thing. Everyone's happy. Uh, production quality. Any any comments there? Fuck we getting... BTS. Damn, dude. <laughs> oh, shit. slam. <laughs> all right. I, w while we talk about this, we should. I, th I think we need to talk about how the the majors went, the major qualifiers went as well, because it's basically like two tournaments in a row where, um, st where we had major, and, and by we I mean all broadcasters together, like because we're basically all involved in this, mm -hmm. where there were issues basically, like uh, what we should have done did not match up with what the what is like baseline for the viewer, and I feel like the issues are everybody's trying to run tournaments right now and. A lot of the people that are running some of these tournaments, especially in Southeast Asia, they don't completely know what they're doing. That seems to be clear now, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, obviously, um, the, what happened in, uh, with us in Sweden was not exactly the same because DreamHack was very talented. But we keep making mistakes from a tech standpoint, and it's maybe not all on the caster standpoint. It's more like, like, what do you guys think the issue is, basically, is, is my question. Well, I, one of their problems was that camera shot. The amount of headroom that was in that thing was way yeah, too ridiculous. I really didn't like the camera shot. That was like something that you could tell someone said was like, wow, this looks really cool. The logo is really prominent, but there was so much headroom. I saw some, somebody posted like on the subreddit. Their heads summer. were like down at the bottom of the desk. Yeah, basically. like your head should be at least like two-thirds of the way up to the camera at like a minimum. When you're at the bottom like 25%, you just look like a little ant in front of this giant wall. So you're just referring to the land then? Because I thought we were talking about the... Yeah, but like, I mean, I think it all ties stage. together, honestly. Yeah. Like, so those well, are it got like, better. It got it's better. not fair to criticize the shit on Nanyang when when we came off of a major qualifier where we had stream issues the first couple of days. 
That's what I'm trying to say. Because I don't want to just like say, which like, stream issues are you referring to? I mean, like part part of the issues with what we did with Dream League was that it was just not really our model was not a good fit for the model of that event. The nature of it being 24 seven and so many regions and so many games. But from a production, like, we didn't have that many issues of, like, you know, audio not working properly and that kind of stuff, did we? Yeah, the tech, there was no tech issues, but I just thought, thought that the fact that we didn't have two streams running from the beginning was, mm. was a big mistake. I think like, at the end of the day, it's just very different, production though. quality doesn't matter, which is why Dirt Mall is going to be the biggest tournament this next year. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was just thinking about it on a meta thing. Um it seems like a, people are getting pretty fed up with these, like Purge was saying, these production quality kind of things where even ESL typically has a few big uh, audio problems in the first day and then they figure it out and stuff. So, uh, yeah, the question is, I mean, is it that important, these production things, or if they're fixed by the end, does that really matter? And then uh, what can people do, as Purge was saying, to make sure this doesn't happen? I mean, the majors are coming up. ESL's got the reins on that yet again. Um Big production problems going to happen in that, or does it matter? Who cares? Well, what do you guys think? For something like Nanyang, I think one of the big things is prep time at, at the actual venue, because you're you're always trying to min max the amount of time you are actually renting out the venue space. So you need lead time to set up all the stuff, and it's it's hard to project manage that to a T to know that you have okay, we've got 12 hours to test, we'll have some downtime, it's all good. Usually things run under, some gear breaks, and you have to make last second adjustments, and that's just unique to doing a LAN at a big venue, something that could happen at the major, but that's usually a budgetary thing. I would hope that they have, a, you know, that extra little bit of budget to, you know, be in the venue a day earlier so there's plenty of time to test and do rehearsals and run-throughs and make sure everything's all square. Yeah, like sometimes I, it's I do not think feasible, a, lot, a lot of these places either don't have that access or they do, and they think everything's fine, and then once there's an actual stress test of a live event, it falls over. I mean, I... Yeah. I cannot think of, of any lands I've been to where there haven't been technical issues and these are competent people these are experienced companies there's something about moving computers from their safe little boxes out onto a stage where it all fucking goes wrong and the sound guys are like it was working yesterday and everything it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't seem to make a difference <laughs> something will go wrong what I what I think is that they often test it by just getting some people out there to mess around the computer and they're like yeah it sounds fine and uh, there's something that happens in the LAN event. I don't know what it is. If it's some kind of black magic that happens, that there will always be a problem. I think it's just how quickly they overcome that that really makes a difference. Everybody expects problems in the LAN, but if you don't address it quickly, if you have audio issues rolling past the first day, people yeah. have a legitimate right to complain, I think. Anyway, well, by the way, I, I wrote dirt all on my hands with pen. I don't know. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> I wrote it pretty Jesus. small. But I thought that would be legit. We were going to do it later this year, but I don't know if it's going to happen later this year. So it might need to be a dude. We got it. We got to do Christmas dirt mall. Oh yeah, a bunch of shits happening. Christmas, Christmas, we could do it. Have oh. you been naughty or dead? Mm, dirt mall. <laughs> dirt <laughs> mall three. <Christmas. laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. Okay. So that no, makes sense. I don't know. Oh, you know, I, th I think you make some good points, Ted. It's it's hard to simulate the real thing. Like, I remember that was a big issue we had at the Summit 2 in particular and also the Summit 3 of like, okay, we don't have enough devices to simulate all of the people with all of their cell phones and tablets and laptops using all of the computers to capacity on our internet. It's like, we've done the math. We should have plenty of bandwidth when everything's connected, but what's the breaking point when the router is going to crap out? Or, you know, you also don't really know... Like someone sitting down, testing the chairs. Yeah, the computer works. Sounds fine. The players have different different levels of expectation. You know, the chairs were a big problem for a long time. It seems like we finally overcome the chair issue. But some of that is just not knowing exactly what players or people are going to expect in terms of it's fine. What is it's fine? Is that a 720p 30 FPS frame or a 30 FPS stream? Is it a 720 uh, 60 FPS stream? Like there's kind of different standards of. Yeah, this sounds You know, okay. I, I think the other thing is people compare it to TV a lot, which is unfair because mm -hmm. it's not often that a TV production takes place outside a studio and a studio has 24-7 technical support, people there, it's prepared, it's got all the cabling, it's specifically made for that show in that studio or it's like, I mean, they'll have a studio and they have guys, like 20 or 30 guys running cables, getting everything ready and these people have been working in television for 20 years or whatever. When you have people turning up, most of them are probably being paid very little. A lot of them are probably have not done like thousands of hours of events and stuff. You are always going to have issues. And I think people's expectation is maybe a little high for something that is basically a LAN. Yeah. And it, it is always, there are always going to be technical problems. I agree that it would be great if we could get rid of them, but 
let me just say this. My buddy Chris was at a Hearthstone <laughs> tournament at BlizzCon or some big Blizzard event. And their setup was this beautiful stage. I mean, stunning. It was like a TV set. It was beautiful. You could see you had one team on one side, one on the other, symbols everywhere, avatars. It was like, here is a storm, here is a storm, everything like that. And they had these two big screens so people could watch the games. But if you imagine you've got your stadium seating like this that goes around, the two big screens were right at the edge of the stage facing away. So if you're sat in the middle 80% of the crowd, you all you get to watch is the players. Like, you don't get to see the game. There's no Riveting. in-game camera. Like, you're having to go like this to see anything. So, like, halfway through the tournament, they cut to, they showed a crowd shot, and it's just, like, three guys sat there. Everybody else is clustered <laughs> around the edge trying to watch it. So, although we do have problems, they, they're technical ones rather than, you know, mental ones. Yeah, yeah. true that. I, I think, think audio engineer, oh, I think oh, audio sorry, engineers buddy. are also really undervalued. Like the idea of having a person that you pay and hire whose job it is, is to just do everything audio. Know what gear to use, how to rig it up, to wire it so you don't get feedback from the power sources. All that stuff is like, I feel like audio is often, oh, we got a nice camera, yeah, just fuck, plug a mic into it, we're good. And like, audio engineer is a, a real job. People study that shit, you know. Audio is, a, it's a big beast, and I think people often you underestimate You know, one problem they had... A, a DreamHack winter a couple of years ago, anybody that watched the stream could hear this terrible audio. And we had a problem with our in-ear because we were casting on stage. This is like me and Toby and Draskal and Ooh. I think Bruno. No, not team. Bruno, someone else. And it was a lot of fun. But we were casting and every now and then, like there was a continual crackle in your ear and then now and again it would spike to like this unbearable squeal like feedback. And the guy that was doing this setup, oh. he was like really experienced sound engineer. But the problem was that all those people in there had phones and wireless and all these other mics and all the other stages were going at the same time and they just hadn't expected that like it was running fine in rehearsals everything was fine everything was great and then once it went live and you've got all the heat and all the machines and electricity let's not overlook that electricity flowing like a river <laughs> like a torrent just flooding everything and uh it all it all sounded terrible they couldn't fix it they just they didn't know what it was it was like it should yeah. be working it should be fine and it fucking won't yeah it's oh, not so yeah. We're always getting better, right? I don't know. On the on the bright side, I think the player side stuff has really improved a lot. Like I haven't seen a player like really bitch about a tournament in a long time. I mean, and they even were... said the opposite about this tournament. Yeah, like every literally every tournament lately, the players are like, yeah, these these tournaments are amazing. They're, they've been great from player standpoints. Like maybe there's some tech issues, but um, seems like maybe streams have been left behind. Seems like they they focus so much on players now that streams get they left behind. They spent all the money on uh, the hotel, you know, with the ship yeah. on the freaking the roof. Fuck? Yeah. <laughs> the million dollars. I'm not even palace. kidding though. That, I mean, I'm partially joking, but a lot like they obviously didn't care that much about the group stage because, I mean, obviously I was joking as BTS's fault because obviously it's not, but uh, that production was absolutely awful. <laughs> like that was pretty bad to the point where you think, did they even like test this one time? Like I don't think so. Yeah. Because like if you go back to the summit, that's a little bit different because stress testing is one thing. Not being prepared to even run a stream is to another. Have like a, yeah. Having a production show plan, yeah, you're right. That is that is definitely a big difference. I will say this, though. I mean, the Summit 3 was the only thing I've ever watched that had no zero technical issues ever. I mean, yeah. it, it was literally well, clean, the so entire thing. So when you're running a tournament, there's like this triangle of, of high priorities. One of them is the viewer experience. One of them is the player experience. And the third one is the tournament organizer's experience in terms of your ability to make a profit or not. Because you can make it amazing for both sides if you have unlimited money, but you're always constrained by resources, right? So you have to find a way to make all parts of the triangle work. And it seems like emphasis has shifted. For a long time, it was all about the viewers and you know, like the old star ladders where, all right, 16 teams, group stage, everybody's fighting everybody. And it's like, all right, this is sort of awesome to watch. Not really. Teams didn't like it. And now it's more about, okay, what's what's best for teams? You know, that's kind of the triangle we've been focusing on. I think we need to find the, maybe, maybe find that middle ground, find the balance again, kind of like Purge was saying. Well, I honestly think that there needs to be priority when you're watching a tournament, would you rather the players were happy and the games were awesome or the production values were through the roof but the players were unhappy and the games weren't so great? Like, which would you rather have? I would rather have the great games. Anything else so. that goes around it is a bonus. Like, the priority is the games have to be good. You don't have control over that. The only control you've got is if the players are happy, settled, they can play to their best. That that's, has to be the priority. The waiting has to be on getting the games as good as they can be. And the only thing that follows from that is the players have to be happy. And then I, th I honestly think as a viewer, once they're in the game, 
like you know as long as the sound for the commentators is all right if the production value on the, the desk and everything is a little middling then you can put up with that and it's got its own charm to it as well i think but yeah. i'm a lo-fi guy you know i like lo-fi shit so it's it's what do i know i've never set up a tournament i helped shane at ireland though that was legit. yeah yeah very good i that say was... fuck the players <laughs> <laughs> treat them like cattle treat them like the filth they are wheel them in make them play <laughs> let them go they're getting too big of egos. We want chairs. We want hotel rooms. That's not how it used to be. People used to beg for those $500 things. They're too spoiled, man. Fuck them. You're like an Hell NFL me. owner or something. What a piece That's of it. shit. Buy hey, a it's the triangle, team. bro. It's the triangle. You want to have the best games in the world and have a lot of money and 0% player happiness. They don't like it? They can go play League of Legends. Oh, wait, you can't because Riot won't let you play it. So fuck you. Okay? That's it. <laughs> That's very my accurate of the statements triangle. there. Very Turge is so pissed. Oh my god! No, baby, we're doing a show right now. Get out. Oh <laughs> she loves the camera, doesn't she? Wow. Mrs. Slacks. Very shy. She's gonna, she, she'll come through my door in a minute because you made her fuck off. <laughs> oh man. Oh my god. Purge, so, you looked upset, man. You used to be a pro player. What do you think about that stance? Whoa! Used fuck you! Ah. <laughs> dude, it was like three months. I don't know. I got you, Cap. I got you. That's really oh. accurate, dude. I'm just ripping you from the Omni Knight comment, bro. I'm sorry. No, I think the only cool. thing I was ever really mad about as a player is they uh, the boosts weren't soundproof, so they had to play the StarCraft music during the games, and we had oh. trouble communicating oh. because it was bleeding through our mics because they were just like pounding StarCraft music so loud. But Even StarCraft though, music is awesome, man. I love awesome, that music. But like, we couldn't hear each other very well using our team speak and stuff. Like, we couldn't yell to each other. I couldn't hear like two people down from that because they were pounding so the music because they were so worried about cheating. Wow. So, I, I am uh, glad that that has changed though. That really is a standard now. Sound, soundproofing for at least most lands at at this point. Really? No is way. It, it's is it not fully. a standard yet? There's no way. It's like was it in Nanyang actually? Right. I didn't hear anything about the soundproofing. They like they make it look like it's soundproofing and it's like pretty soundproofed, but you're still gonna hear the crowd no matter what. You're yeah. still gonna hear a couple things. And no more level one rushes, lot, man. It's impossible. Yeah, like the, you, there over. will be audio bleed no matter what. There's there's like no setup in my opinion that's perfect. I didn't play in the TI five booths or anything. Maybe those are ideal. But I've for actually like never every sat tournament in sub TI. Booths. Like the TI two booths were really relatively yeah. bad. Like we played in those, we could hear Roshan, we could hear smokes. There was like all that shit you could hear at TI two. That shit was all plagued by audio issues. Yeah, but you just they, address didn't it. those uh, the TI booths cost like. Tens of thousands of dollars. It's like a quarter million dollars for yeah, us. Probably well, more than right, that. A quarter of a million. Jesus. They're absurdly Sick. expensive. I mean, what their solution is the now? base, though. That's nuts. They're filling with yeah. water when there's no tournaments on. Oh, They're just okay. little fish swimming around. Is that where Valve does their hits? They like bring people in there and beat the shit out of them and like. <laughs> <laughs> there are no, things you can do to make it better, though. I think you're right, Kevin, that you can never completely soundproof it. But I we've seen some tournament setups where they'll put the the speakers behind the booths, and it's like, well, there's just sound blasting into the booths. If you can position things so the acoustics make it less likely you can hear specific things the casters are saying, and just more you might like you know hear the remnant of a smoke sound or the crowd getting amped up over something. But yeah. I we think saw... it's cool, like the the factor of players hearing the crowd. I think, I mean, obviously, they can give away stuff, but as a player, you gotta prefer that. I mean, that must be awesome to feel. I think it's, the it's, the it's weird. Sometimes they cheer, and you're like, "What the fuck's going on?" Like they start <laughs> you yelling, panic. and you, you just look <laughs> no! at the map. You're like, "Who's getting ganked? Who's getting ganked?" <laughs> like, where do where am I about to TP? You know? <laughs> There's like little things like that, and then sometimes the casters are taking around, and they get people to cheer about nothing. Like ESL New York, for example, the crowd was going like, whoa, every time there's an A ult. And yeah. Solo could hear that shit. Like, he, he typed it, you know, because he could hear it. Like, there's confirmation. They can hear crowd. It influences the game a little bit. Yeah. And in, at, sometimes in a negative way. At MLG, that one guy that said woo really changed the... <laughs> <laughs> woo! <laughs> at the end. It's terrifying. It messes with everybody. All right, should oh, we move man. on? We've been talking about this for a long ass time. New yeah. patch came out. Doom nerf! <laughs> Sorry, Zyra, right. I'm taking your host job. Do it, Slack, please. <laughs> Get wrecked, Zyra. I've got a whomping hangover. This is, this is right. great. Anyone want to talk reins. about it other than me? Doom nerf? Uh, I think it was definitely needed. Was it enough? I, I think so. I don't know. I mean, I think I it would... was a... I mean, Purge, correct me where I'm wrong, but it felt like a slight nerf. It wasn't anything huge. I mean, the cooldown more than anything, I think. I, I think the nerf was... It wasn't about making Doom worthless in lane. Because Scorched Earth is, like, really good, right? Like, it barely reduced the damage in the heal. But the big difference was the cooldown at late game. So late game, it's like 55 seconds instead of 45. Like, that was fairly significant. But the most important thing was the fact that eggs doesn't now double your fucking doom damage. 
yeah, which is huge. the important thing. It basically takes Doom and says like every game you're gonna buy Blink Dagger, maybe some boot, and you're gonna get an Ax later. Like 100%, you will get an Ax because it'll double your damage. Now Dooms are like, do I really need Ax this game? And I think that's the way the game should be played. Your item builds should not be the same fucking thing every game. It should vary slightly depending on what you're playing against. And now his Ax isn't so like. I was watching RTZ stream and he like doomed him and he was at like 50% and he was running away but naturally it refreshed and he just fucking died. Like the only solution against that is tons of HP or like a buttload of regen and if you're taking like 80 pure damage a second for like 15 seconds like you're dead. So I, th I think it's really good now. Like it, if you want to keep eggs on somebody and keep doom on somebody you can but it doesn't just like one shot a support after you like scorched earth or right click them twice and walk so away. So the main reason to get eggs now is to break a passive that really needs to be Yeah break, and to refresh the duration. Yeah. Mm. I think that puts like, it in a better place. I like that you have to kind of choose if you want the break upgrade now, whereas before I was per it was just a no-brainer. Why would you not get it? I kind of feel like anytime they nerf and people are saying, is it enough? I'm actually happier that it's a slight nerf. Like, I don't like these sledgehammer nerfs that come in because if it's if the hero's considered really good, then just, just trim it back a bit until they're, like, good. Like, they should all be at that level. You shouldn't have to come in and go, like, right... We're going to fucking take this away and that away. We're going to double yeah. the put on this because it's like, okay, well, now you're going to have to buff this hero in a later patch because they're, you so just here, screwed here's them. Here's the so. question. Does does the slight nerf have anything to do with the fact that Doom being OP has not been that long of a duration compared to like when Sniper was completely ridiculous and Troll and all those other heroes? Like, well, Does that play into the, the balance at all? There's a the certain category line? of heroes that I think are just by their nature, kind of hard to level out. Like, think about Spectre and how much that hero has been altered over the ages in terms of uh, the dispersion mechanics of does it return magical damage, pure damage, and now they have it kind of scale based on the type. It's kind of a hard ability to, to equalize. It's easy for it to be total shit, and it's easy for it to be completely broken. Doom is very similar to that. His ultimate is, like, the, the fuck-all of ultimates, you know? So I... I think it's it, it's difficult to put that hero in a really easy place, and when he's broken, it's much more game breaking. When that ultimate is just too strong, than a hero like Sniper, where there's like multiple ways that you can deal with him. There's a lot of different heroes that kind of counteract him. What counteracts Doom's Ag Ag's upgrade once he gets a little momentum? You know, you need like a dedicated single target healer. Yeah, but the only reason Doom got so OP is because they hammered hammer buffed him. Honestly, Scorched Earth went from doing like. 400 damage doing like 700 damage yeah it was a stupidly big nerf as soon as i read it i was like this is clearly op like you can actually roam doom right now and it's good <laughs> like i totally yeah. saw that one coming and it was oh. that's that's why he got so strong but i think i i'm actually very glad the way that he got shifted even if he got this period where he's too strong like it makes his laning stage really good and you can roam better but to ultimately lead to the ags nerf i'm so happy about that because doom ags is definitely one of the most uncounterable things in the game you either have to have like an omni or a Dazzle, or an Oracle, or somebody that can just pound heals on somebody for 10 seconds. That's like the only way to prevent it from killing somebody now. Or just yep. get five Lotus Orbs, five Lincolns, you know. Yeah. That's yeah. basically what That's Secret, great... oh, was it Secret or Vici? One of the two teams playing against Doom did that, essentially. And actually, no, no, it was, so Secret had Lotus Orb against it, and they had Rubik stealing Doom as well. So they, they had two Dooms, technically, to counteract it. It's I kind of counter. feel like, like Valve did this differently than they normally do. Normally they would wait until the next big patch and then they change like all the heroes at once and there's really nothing to say that they couldn't just say okay this hero is obviously out of control we'll just come in with a little mini patch just to change this one hero like why haven't they done that previously like i, I feel like that that was system. legit like just yeah. do that just say okay rather than wait for the next big patch we'll just say well we can fix this right now just trim a little bit and change that and hopefully that'll do it like just yeah. keep doing that shit nobody's gonna mind downloading a teeny tiny patch that fixes a broken hero. Like, I, I just don't get it. They should do that more often. Um, I mean, guys... if you if you buff too often, it like changes the game so much that everybody gets kind of confused. Like, yeah, but it's, just, it's like this much. I'm not saying like you go right, boom, we're changing this hero, but just little changes like that, I think, is okay. Mm. But something yeah, that's out of control. Dangerous from a politics standpoint is all I think. Politics. You know, like how how your viewers, <laughs> how much your viewers flame Ice Frog. I just, I just, I don't want to like give you four sentences for it. I thought saying politics mm. would be more clear cut. But just you know, imagine, like... just think back, Kev, to when Sniper and Troll. Okay, <laughs> the year. <laughs> I, I was, I was on my knees praying for something, and they just didn't listen. It was, it was like, like you know, it, there, there was nothing, and then all of a sudden they fixed it. I was like, 
did this really take 12 months or whatever to come up with? Like, they could have changed that earlier, I think. They could do that more often. That's all. Just a little. Just a little. Now and just a little. But hey, guys, we're overlooking this new region in Tokyo. Go Japan Esports. Tokyo! Hey! Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I saw yeah. somebody screenshot. They had literally five ping. I'm really envious. Five ping? That's amazing. Those are like the the Sweden ping levels, man. That's the good stuff. You know, not, not to complain, but... Uh, <laughs> That's basically what I do. Uh, West Coast US. Why in baby Jesus' horse's head is there not an LA server? I don't understand. I understand they're being Seattle because they're based in Seattle. Why is there no LA servers? Yeah. I should are be you, are getting you complaining 10 ping. It's really, about the ping from LA to <laughs> fucking right. Seattle? You live no, no, in I'm not in LA. Actually, I mean, I, I live Arizona, in West then. Coast. Like, and it's like, I have like 70 ping West Coast, which is. Yeah, I don't know. The dense, the population density is definitely in the southwest, really. I but mean, isn't the problem be, with the shitty, the shitty internet in America that it's like Probably, it has to be rooted yeah. here, there, and everywhere because of the way no, they've, I mean, they've split it up? They That's just definitely haven't prioritized putting anything in. LA. I mean, okay, so I'm, I don't know what your ping is, Purge. You just said seventy to what? That's pretty. It's I like mean, mine, seventy west, uh, like ninety east. Yeah, so it's almost the same for us to play on east, and we're on the other side of the goddamn country. Put some goddamn servers in L.A. It's a big country, Jesus. Suns fan. Yeah. Ping doesn't matter Not to me. Big. But they anyway. split up. They split up the internet. Yeah, as I techies. understand it. As I understand it, the problem is the the American ISPs are like, we don't want you running our traffic on our lines. Well, we don't want you running traffic on our lines. You have to go around. Oh, okay, like that. I I, I understood that that was the issue Ted's with with uh, right. the internet in the states. Yeah. So as much as you complain, they could put it in LA, and for all you know, Shannon, it could be even worse. So okay, I actually okay. I, I understand that the infrastructure in the U.S. as far as internet is concerned is garbage. But if you look at Counter Strike, they have servers in L.A. for Counter Strike. I get <laughs> so, so switch to Counter Strike. I get what you're saying. So I get to twenty goddamn ping. Okay, I want right. to play Dota in twenty ping. You don't need twenty ping if you're any good. You, it's not even fine. a noticeable difference. Like you're you're Shit. not like what are your centaur ults going to be that much better, Shannon? <laughs> you're, you're saying you can't tell the difference between twenty ping and eighty ping? Are you? My being... brain adds two hundred ping to any ping. Okay? Yeah. So I, mean, I can you're... be playing at twenty or fifty. It's all over three hundred. It doesn't matter. Oh, that was even add up to three hundred. Is there? What's the status on on land mode? Is that even a thing? I mean, not that like, I'm privy is... to. Can, does anybody have a reason why that's not a thing? It might be related no. to Dota TV, like putting the stuff on Dota TV, maybe. Oh yeah. They need that Dota TV I feel like money, there's bro. a way to separate those two to coexist, to where players can play on land. I mean, imagine I mean, playing on I land. Mean, Some of it is a control thing. That was the main reason it was removed from StarCraft Two. Was because basically because of Kespa. Blizzard was like, no, we want control over these games. Kespa said, fuck you, we're just going to run offline lands, and there was nothing Blizzard could do about it because it was all on offline servers. So when you give people the control to do that, you lose the ability to regulate you know, what Wasn't kind of Wasn't that more a copyright they... thing? Because StarCraft was huge. Uh, well, in, copyright uh... is part of it, but the point that like that there was an, just a pure LAN setting in the game prevented Blizzard from having any control over their IP. It's not an issue in Dota 2 at all because all those tournament organizers want to get a ticket and make money from that. So Valve already has an upper hand. Yeah. So there's no way that's it. I, I don't know. I've talked to a couple of Valve people that work on server stuff and they're all super smart. And there, there's got to be some shit going on. Like, I mean, in any other game, I they would just run like a relay, factors. right? Like in Counter-Strike back in the day, they used to just run relays for HLTV. And that's, I would think, is essentially exactly the same thing. So I don't know. Do you guys ever imagine a time where Dota is like a game that people talk about as a dead game, the way they talk about StarCraft 2 as being a dead game. No offense, StarCraft 2 fans. I don't think so. You don't think so? Because it has way more replayability. There's there's like 100 heroes, so 40 of them suck or are boring to you. You can find something you like. In StarCraft, you're like, you play, you have three classes, and if you main one class, then there's only three different types of games you can play, like alternated by every single map. But of course, builds change and stuff like that. But like the the replayability alone is like massive. Yeah. And you know what up. killed that game? No lurkers, and they're finally no coming lurkers. out with lurkers too. Single too player, you mean? They're trying to revive freaking <laughs> dead game now with it's, lurkers. Yeah, I, I think what the, the hell's what is a lurker? What? It's a StarCraft lurker. Game. Oh. It's Nyx with Ags. How about that? Oh, yeah, basically. Yeah, basically. Love that's, that's actually a really good way to say it. I think the big problem with StarCraft is the big plays don't really translate on screen that well. You know, like a really top tier player that's going like 300 APM, when you're seeing it on stream, it doesn't really look that different from a 
pretty good player with like 100 APM if they're pretty skilled. In Dota, you can really see the specific kind of coordination it takes across the five heroes. I think that the skill cap translates better on sc on stream than I StarCraft. I don't know if that's true. You really I don't, I mean, I don't agree. Micro Only if you understand so... the game well. If you understand Dota really well, it's definitely very oh, clear. True. But StarCraft's much easier to watch if you don't well, play. Well, no, th this is assuming you know, like, you play both the games. Like you're... I think Micro is more uh, noticeable in StarCraft than Dota, actually. Micro is, but the coordination of, of kind of, it, I mean, it's different because it's single player versus five players. So, I mean, to me, there's something more when you see like five players coordinate that wombo combo of ultimates. That's like, holy shit, all five of them made it work in perfect harmony when it's just one person. It just kind of looks like chaos on the screen. You have all these units killing each other. Well, I think the thing for me as a spectator, it's harder to watch. standpoint, it's just kind of what Purge was saying to reiterate. Every game is basically starting the same. It feels just like, yeah, you know, that's true. My, minute details have changed as opposed to Dota where anything can happen. You can get first blood with the exact same lineup as the previous game. And just there's so much more variety in Dota. So I think that was a, to, to that talking road. to some of the StarCraft 2 fans. I know their, their thing was like that there isn't enough variance between the, the games. Like, yeah, it, there's, there's not enough flair plays. Like there are plays that happen in Dota 2 that we haven't seen before. Builds or, pl or plays or something where you think, oh my God, that was amazing. And it seems like those skill shot things happen in Dota 2 a lot more than in other games mm -hmm. uh, like StarCraft 2 where it doesn't feel like an individual moment of magic that you could pinpoint and say holy shit and highlight and uh, you know I, 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 I don't know I mean I, I used to watch StarCraft before I got into uh, the Dota I was watching it I watched like Day 9 and stuff like that and it was fun it was a new game and I was watching it but I was like after a while I was like you know these games all pretty much look the same and very, or at least similar it was hard um, for me to separate out with StarCraft 2 how much of it was me liking StarCraft and how much of it was me just liking getting into esports and seeing that bubble yeah, grow. Yeah, it know, was a new thing, yeah. That was the beginning of the streaming era. Twitch hadn't even been born yet. Justin TV and Ustream were kind of fighting for the top. Own3D was still around. It was oh, a really cool yeah. time in the industry, and that was the part that really got me going. StarCraft just happened to be the game that everybody watched and gave a shit about. That's not good to play with friends storm. either. Yeah. yeah. What? <laughs> Well, so why did you, it is. Why did you just man? say Heroes of the Storm? I, don't I said know Heroes where. of the Storm is going to kill Dota. It's oh, really fuck that. Game. Yeah, <laughs> I think so, Slax. I think that it's game's over. already dead, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I enjoyed dead, it for like over. two months, and then I was kind of like... You can only eh, soak so much, too. Purge, you know? You like, the worst it. part is the fact that you share experience. So, like, even if you dominate your lane, it means virtually nothing, because the benefit you would get from stomping your lane is, like, a fifth of what you would get in a Dota game. So you can't use that skill to, like, carry your team. It's, it's, a, too, like it. it's too teamwork really. And it's weird can... in terms of pressing the advantage because you it has a lot of comeback mechanics and stuff. It's really easy to... It's... it. I don't know. It has yeah. a weird play style. It's, I like it and I don't like it at the same time. I, like I, it I, I play played it. the tutorial and quit. That's it. <laughs> Let's keep like, cutting slacks off. Why would I play <laughs> Sorry. Slacks I mean, it's, a, it's a habit. Go ahead. What were you going to say, Jake? <laughs> Have you even played I like it because no, I can play sucks. with... What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Boop the show along. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Next up. All right. So <laughs> who watched that E60 thing? Did anyone Me. watch it? The ESPN thing? Yeah, Shannon and I already talked about it. Oh, yeah. We talked about this. Yeah. On on my podcast. All right. Hold on. Before ago. we go any further. Wait. Who watched it? Purge? Anybody else? All right. Did you... I'm going to feel like a woman here. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I almost cried. Like, I got very teary and <laughs> emotional with that video. Jesus. What? Is that is that a normal reaction to, to esports? Well, I think I felt it too. What was it? His dad or whatever? When he said he was proud of his son or whatever? Of, it was uh, multiple Sumail. moments. I don't even remember. It's... Yeah, they did. They did a really good job with the video. I thought it was they great. Did. I had really was... sick nerd chills when they showed the the uh, seven million dollar or six million dollar Echo Slam in all the different languages. I thought that was a really yeah, good was touch. Awesome. That really hit me with the feels. But I did feel like a little bit of it was kind of cheesy. I think they overdid some of the like big zoom in shots. Like I just keep thinking of that one where Dude, Peter's sitting in the throne. Great. And it just moves in, and he's just like Peter Dager. I'm like, oh, this is a little, just, it felt a little overdone Dude, at some parts. They're relating but... to the audience. Everybody loves Matrix, you know. I do like the Matrix. It's I true. mean, PPD is the white Morpheus. <laughs> true. <It's> great. <laughs> I don't know. I puppy. actually. God damn it! <laughs> 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 Fucking slacks. Uh, I actually had a guy who did not know anything. He knew Dota only by name because he was like a family friend. And he watches, you know, he's just some fucking bro. Watches like uh, sports and stuff. Yeah, and he watched bro. on ESPN. 
He had no idea what Dota was, but he recognized the name from me. He's like, hey man, I watched your, your Dodo thing and it was really great. Like, you know, I'm super hyped for it and I was never cared about esports or anything before. So I thought, I mean, it was pretty neat. I mean, That's cool. just from a one guy that had no idea, never saw an esport in his life, he was super into it. So, I mean, pretty uh, neat. What are you, 70? Come yeah, on. I was, <laughs> was going to comment. I think Zayori is just rubbing off on you. I Next, know. you're going to be saying no. Ah! Like, neat should not be in anybody's vocabulary. Do I say oh, neat? That was, uh, real I used to neat. say it ironically. You guys ever do that? You say something like ironically yeah, yeah. so much that it becomes part of your vocabulary? That's like, true. Like, bro, I used to say that all the time. Be like, what up, bruh? And now it's like I actually say it and I forgot. <laughs> You've become what you hate. Yeah. Right, right. It's horrible. It's not. Don't I, say anything ironically, okay? I, I do that with YOLO. <laughs> that started ironically and now I say yeah, YOLO at least like, once YOLO. a day. It's like, yeah, let's just YOLO this stream, guys. We're in. Let's go. <laughs> and that's just become normal lingo. It's terrible. I did also think it was kind of funny that they were talking about Aoi 2000 and how well he fits into Evil Geniuses. The expert <laughs> analysis from one DJ Wheat, Dota connoisseur. I couldn't help but Damn. watch that and just think, really? There is no other well, here's Dota the person thing. How, that you could have they, asked about that? If they have to talk about every player, how do they avoid that, knowing that what's happened, obviously? Because they did know. this before TI. I don't know what the fix is for that, to be honest. They probably picked the two people that had the best storylines, and Sumail was definitely one of them. I was a little disappointed that it was Fear, personally, because like his story's great, but we already heard it in full detail. So I was like, ah, I kind of wish it was a different... Because it was like, I feel like I've seen this before. Cause I watched but they're, the relate, they're trying to times. relate to a different audience, right? And, you know... That's a good point. Like he does the have old a very country, good story. Oregon, yeah, got kicked out of his house because he gamed too much. You know, it it's is very like relatable. Sumail's story. If Sumail's parents were a little more strict, I want to have a documentary on uh, Charlie. Wouldn't that be fun? Like a four-hour fucking anger fest. <laughs> yeah, it's <just> really <laughs> like, bad. There's fucking just like kill yourself. moments. Like kill yourself. <laughs> Dude, we, I played I played Hanukkah Coliseum with him for like four hours the other night, and he would only pick like top two heroes. That's some of it. He's like, "What's the most annoying hero I can?" I'm gonna pick Storm Spirit. I bet it's really abusive in this game. You know, he do stuff like that. He carried us a few times, but like, Wait, who else that, is man. who else is OP in that mode? So Undying, I've noticed Isn't, it's quite good. Is Dark Seer good? Yeah. Uh, Dark Seer's okay. Um, I, I've I think, been owning with Slark a lot. Pretty balanced, honestly. Like, there's not a lot of heroes that are just strictly overpowered. Well, they did yeah. modify some of them, right? Like Pudge's Flesh Heap is right. nerfed. Yeah. Uh, I think they probably must have nerfed Silencer as well. I the best one that we did is I ran them Tree and Protector, and I got Treads and three Ring of Protections, and I just ran after people and punched them. Yeah, that was really <laughs> overpowered because I had I like ten armor and life steal. It was so good. Oh yeah, Earth have you guys all played it yet? By the way, everybody played it. Period. Yep, so been, been playing it a lot. The new yeah, it's been really yeah, fun. Yeah. Yeah. No, I haven't played it's it. It's great. Yet. It's really good. Okay, I swear. I'll play it. I'll play it. So what it's have really you been balanced. playing, Ted? Uh, CS:GO, Hearts of Iron Three, Blood Bowl Two, all kinds of nerd shit. Blood Bowl. Yeah. yeah. All these awesome games that aren't Dota. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I haven't been able to stream for like three days because of uh, my ISP being a bunch of dicks and. Uh, I just kind of I started playing other games for a while. I even fucking played the Law and Order game, like that's how. Hey, oh. oh my god! Yeah, I didn't even know Law and Order. Like yeah, that. me neither. It was, but made by Telltale Games. Like it's it's actually kind what? of legit. Is like, it like turn based? You know, they give a rebuttal and then you get time to hit them with a comeback. <laughs> Literally, or? it says like you have to listen to the case, and it's like, do you want to interject? I was like, <laughs> objection, Your Honor. Clearly leading the witness, or <laughs> and it was great. It was great fun. But yeah, I, I mean, I'm you know Dota is. Uh, there is something that no matter what else I play, I still in the back of my mind I'm thinking, I wish I had a couple of hours spare so I could play Dota. Because that's the issue at the moment is during the day, because it's half term, yeah. right? So the kids are around all the time. Mrs. F took the week off. So uh -huh. it's like, hey honey, I'm going to play Dota. She's like, no, I need you to wax the floor. So it's like, oh yeah, cool. So I'll just play something else I can play for like 40 minutes. <laughs> wax is that the a floor? thing? Waxing the floor? It's well, an I, euphemism. I, I literally, no, it's, I wish, I wish it was. <laughs> I uh, literally. Perry, and this floor is floor. nasty. Can you yeah. come wax it? <laughs> come wax oh, his yeah. dirty floor. It's and he's and I was like, oh, yeah. She's like, right, there's the sander, there's the oil, get on it. I was like, oh, you were serious? It was literally the floor. Okay, yeah, sure. So, yeah, the, the kids have been off all week, and uh, and she took the week off. And originally, I was going to be. Um, what was I going to be doing this week? I was going to be doing something this week, but I ended up not doing it. I'm not going to say what it was. But in the Wax end, the uh, right. wasn't. No, no, no. This was the. Uh, <laughs> This is uh, option B. I, I had to sand the floor, 
get it all down nice and level. I know all about floors now. I, I hired a sander. It looks like a lawnmower, and you push this thing up and down, and it sands the floor down. You got to change the grade from from heavy grade down to light grade. Get it just right, and you got to get down there and get down on your hands and knees. You know, getting all the dust. You got to hoover that all up. Get it all just right, and then you go over it with the oil. Get it down there. Two coats. Make sure it's nice and smooth. Then get to buff it up to a finish. That's what I did. Well, the majors well, are coming up. <laughs> You asked. You asked. No one you. asked. No one. Literally, no one asked. You, just you did. About. You asked what I did. You asked what I did. No. I told you what I fucking did. No. Oh, yeah. Go ahead and Nobody talk about the Nobody wanted a fucking 15-minute right, Tell me about the fucking majors then, big man. Come on, let's hear it. Maybe you Nothing. won't get interrupted this That time. was what I wrote down. The majors are coming up. So how about those majors? You can't even majors? fucking spell majors. <laughs> Fuck you, bro. Go Jesus on then, let's Christ. Go. Yeah, yeah, so how about those majors, Can quiet until we have anything about floors that we need answered? And then, thank you. How about Cinderin hitting about uh, 7k MMR? That's hey! a fun talking point. Yay, Cinderin! Yeah! How good is 7k purge? Is that like good, good? Is that A plus? A plus plus? Are you jealous? Um, Do you feel like he's better than you jealous. now? Oh, yeah. yeah. You are, you there was a point where I was like 5.4 and he was like 5.8, and I was like, nice, I want to beat Cinderin. Now there's no fucking way I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not possible anymore. So. All those yeah, awesome 7k is really good, honestly. Like uh, a lot of players criticize Cinderin. Um, I, it's what it seems like. Like a lot of, we'll say, redditors or fans criticize Cinderin a lot too. And I would say that even within the pro scene, I've heard some things occasionally. But like getting seven K is really good. So and even if he isn't super individually talented, I'm sure that he has like really good attitude and he leads his team. And that's something I wish I was way better at. Because honestly, oh, yeah. if you look around the the Dota two scene, what is the thing that consistently breaks teams? It's a lack of captain. It's happened with like Navi. Happened with like Team Liquid for a while, Digital Chaos, maybe one or two Ooh. more teams. Like lack of lack Hergy. of in game, maybe a lack Hergy. of in game direction. You know, something like that. So <laughs> I, I feel like that's really valuable because people talk about how good PPD is and how important he is. Yeah. And then we look at Puppy and dare I say best player of all time at this point. Like he's won. How many teams has he been in that are consistently top teams? Yep. And it seems clear oh, that his wow. drafting is amazing. Like being a captain is definitely the most valuable thing. As a Dota player, I so. think Puppy has one of the highest win rates on Dat Dota of any player. If you look at like career wide um, Dota Dota scores on Dota two, he's like top three or something like that. It's which is pretty impressive. Well, it's, think about it's how not many just having a mind out. for the game; it's having the right personalities to yeah command respect on your team. That's like the but probably the biggest thing of all, honestly. Like people like Goblack are really like. Of course, I don't know him personally, but people talk about how he's really good at like uh, drafting and thinking of strategies, but He's missing something that Puppy and PPD have, obviously. Like I've I've hung out with Puppy a bit at, at events and stuff since like TI3 and 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 uh, the EU hub and all kinds of stuff like that. And it's not just the fact that he's a big guy, right? Because I don't, I have no respect for Jake, and he's a big guy. Yeah. So Puppy is is also a big guy, but he he's not just confident. He's confident, and he explains his thinking to you, and you're like, that makes complete sense to me. Like he he just yeah. he'll just say it very confidently. He's like. Well, look. If we do this, they'll do that, and he's always right. Like he, he. If you ever watch a game with him in the draft phase, he'll be like, "They should pick so and so," or "They're going to pick so and so next," and he knows like two or three picks ahead what they're going to go for. Uh, like it's not just a, a question of experience. The guy understands the game a hundred percent. He understands the game better than most people out there. No matter how good they are, he fucking knows Dota, and he's he's a great player and a great captain and I mean honestly like you said he's got to be considered one of the best of all time absolutely 100% and that's yeah. the key to being a good captain you have to actually know Dota like I know guys that are loud give out plays like this guy Peering Flex constantly screaming telling people what to do he has no idea what the fuck is going that's on the bullshit. entire time he's he doesn't played even realize he's playing you've played with me. he's still trying to direct in Dota when, when yeah, do I ever tell right. you what to do in a game of fucking Dota? Have I ever called you up on a play and said, oh my god, what you should have you done? You missed the play. No. Oh yeah. my god. All I say to you is, you, for 45. you fucking fuck you, suck. Fuck That's fuck all I say is, what the fuck was that? <laughs> Especially when you're like, I'm getting so so I am. Fuck my team. I'm doing this. This is my plan. I'm. I'm fucking Sir Action Slacks. I'm the best Omni Knight player ever. And you fuck it up for us time and again. That's all I say is don't fuck it up. That's it. That's not a captain speak. And that's a fellow teammate. Well, we can both out. agree on better than OD Pixel. So can we at least oh, say dude. that? That's, oh, my I mean, God. That's <laughs> true, but not a bold claim. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, joking. really went out on a limb there. Damn, I, love, I love Owen. I love Owen. But playing dirt with him is agony. It He's is very bad. enthusiastic. He's very enthusiastic. 
He's well, like, the problem is perhaps too this. enthusiastic. That's yeah, the problem. Yeah. Owen says things with a hundred percent certainty. Yeah, that he just makes it up. Guys, smoke like, now. Let's go. Okay, guys, let's smoke in and let's go in. And then he goes in, and we're all standing around. And he's like, uh, "We're dying." And I'm like, "What? <laughs> no, 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 no! You have to follow that up." But anyway, Dude. captaining is hard. Communication is hard. I agree yeah. with everyone. I think it, it almost requires like uh, like the, the the like you said the respect that you've got to have. And he's obviously got that because he's been around seemingly forever. And I think yeah. a lot of people come in as captain and other people kind of feel they could do a better job and they kind of want to challenge that or they'll... Like, you see this all the time when someone will try a role and they'll be the one position or they'll be the two or whatever and they have a couple of bad games. It's like, right, you're, you're demoted. But no one would ever say to Puppy after a couple of bad games, right, you're not the captain anymore. Like, that's just not going to happen. So yeah. that, that kind of respect, I think, is really important. Well, I that mean... did kind of happen in Secret <laughs> <laughs> for a little bit. S4 took over, but I think that was more... Yeah, that worked out great. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. Puppy was still kind of the captain, though. You know, yeah. that's, that's how I felt. Yeah, it seemed Puppy like scares S the shit out of me. Yeah, Yeah. I, I mean, I was that a true, life. like, handing the torch over captain, or was it more... I thought S4 was more just drafting, and then Puppy was still kind of calling well, the shots. Well, yeah, that's what game. I mean. I mean, that's part of captaining, though, is drafting, usually. It's but, part of it, yeah, but it was still... They, they it was more of like a hybrid than... S4 but like when I was sitting in on them on the, the at the summit, it still felt like he was drafting. Honestly, like S4 was making the final decision, but yeah. most of it was still puppy. Yeah. So how about monkey business, man? Now they're Team OG. What does Team OG stand for? By the Nothing. way. Nothing. Yeah, it's I can't just... figure it out. Original is it, gangsters. Is it That's just original gangsters? And, yeah. Yeah. What else? We're the OGs. Be? What's up? Yeah. We're, I don't know. We're Team NWA. Uh, we're going in the Dota scene. <laughs> is that like a, is it a European organization? Because I feel like that's a very European thing to do. OG? Yeah. To like label yourself as something like gangster or... They're probably where is, Swedish. Where is Hitbox located? Anybody Hitbox know? Uh, Austria. Is a, yeah. Their HQ is, is in Austria. Austria. Okay, so it's European. Yep. Yeah, what do you think? I mean, about I don't that? think it's I don't think it's like a Hitbox organization. I think it's just sponsored by Hitbox. Yeah, I wonder. But, it's but they're like the the primary sponsor. If you look at their Twitter, it says "bankrolled by Hitbox." So I think it's pretty. Yeah, I mean, I wonder do... how big the deal is because it's all it's got to be it's got to be pretty big Hitbox. to get all those players exclusively on Hitbox. Yeah, for sure. Well, less competition for my stream on Twitch now, I guess. Hey. Wait, wait, wait. But I, I really like the idea of the org and player organizations like that. Um. Hopefully it starts, it continues the trend of seeing more organizations do the same thing. Because I think a lot of these orgs are kind of stuck in the past where they're just trying to, you know, make that money. They don't really care about the players as much. Mm -hmm. we'll so see they're, they're doing I mean, so far kind of like a secret-esque thing. Though. Is that what you mean? Like this is, they're not, you know, signing onto a, a classic team like Navi or Virtus Pro where they own their rights. It's more, we represent well, ourselves. It's a player, a team by the players for the players kind of a thing. I mean, it's similar to the way we do our team as well, because the, the players get a huge cut of sponsorship money, so they're kind of incentivized to want to work with sponsors because they're getting that money, and right. it's the same concept. And I, I mean, that's how traditional sports does it for the most part. Um, it's not exactly the same, but it's similar. It's way more similar than the way that, like, I keep wanting to say team names. Other teams do it, uh, and I think they're just stuck in the past. It'll change. Yeah. Give it another year or two, and I think all of the organizations will be like this. I mean, I have flashbacks to uh, when Fnatic signed Azubu. Is that what it was? That all the players had to stream on it. It's like no tail with 30 viewers. Yeah. That was, I, ho <laughs> hopefully, they don't have that same experience on Hitbox. That's just demoralizing. You know, I think they had like hours they had to stream as well, just sitting there talking to nobody. That's that's demoralizing, man. That's just not fun. And then it just gets them into a place where they're like, all right, let's go play, let's just go stream some bullshit content. Like, then they don't even try to make their stream good, and it just further hurts themselves because, yeah. like, they're just, they're like, oh, I have to do this many hours. I'm just going to turn my stream on, and I'm going to take, like, a one-hour break to make a sandwich and leave it on and shit like that. Like, they, <laughs> I, I guarantee the players will do stuff like that. Oh, yeah. I That's exactly what they did. I remember hearing people call this, the platform, a boo-boo instead of a zoo-boo. I always thought that was funny. That's because you're a so sweet you like guy, Zyori. <laughs> ah, they said boo boo. It's neat. Oh, That's what a, neat. What a, what a that neat, is neat. What a neat joke, it's guys. Neat. Oh, my. Do you ever say shucks like day to day? Oh, shucks. Like, I could just imagine you saying it. Uh, no? I, on occasion, yeah. Not very often, but that one does slip out from time to time. Well, shucks, Damn, fellas. Dude. That sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so I, Sorry, just, I don't want to be you. I... Oh. It's real bad. 
Okay. So what else do we have, Slacks? Ooh, Halloween. <laughs> I, love, I love these transitions by Slacks. <laughs> Dude, he's practicing for his first big hosting gig. It's coming up That's soon. That's right. I'm going to be hosting uh, MLG. <laughs> MLG Karachi, Pakistan. Yeah. That's, your, that's your job right there. Jason's buddy. coming back, boy. <laughs> Here we go. Sorry. Did you have a good Halloween slacks? Did you a Halloween stream? Did you get all spooky? Uh, no, Did you play no, amnesia I, um, or some shit? Squeal like a little girl? Kick the no, pugs? No, I wanted to. Kick the pugs? <laughs> Is that a game coming out? I no. don't know. It just seems like um, some creepy Halloween no, shit no. you could have gotten into. I wanted to. I wanted to do a Halloween, uh, Halloween stream. I've been a little busy. Had to uh, do some editing and stuff. You guys ever... Oh, God. Yeah. I'm editing interviews from ESL New York because apparently the editing guy skipped town on that. Wasn't so. that event like a month ago, Slacks? What? Fuck you, Zayori! <laughs> yes. It's very hard to edit for something when all the hype is gone. So, yeah. I've been doing that. And then, uh, I don't know, maybe I'll do like a November 3rd Halloween stream. That's still legit. People do that, right? Yeah, the candy's cheaper, so why not? Yeah, go there all you in, go. man. Get all Go hopped on, up on sugar and any good a slack special. You nerds do anything interesting? I, uh, I had a pretty good Halloween. It was my girlfriend's brother's birthday, so there was a gathering in her house, and then I, I played Monopoly with her and crushed her. And I'm happy to announce I still have a girlfriend. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pass the test. That's good. Yeah, Playing right. Monopoly with your girlfriend. Wow. It was Dayton dude. Tips I got I got purge. lucky. I got all four railroads, and I got three of the light blues, the like the second <laughs> property. And then I just slammed hotels on, and everybody thought they were like a house. So the first person hit, I was like five fifty dollars, and they're like, "Wait, are you sure?" I'm like, "Yeah, give me your fucking money." Again, these the are euphemisms. I got all four of her railroads. I put down the houses. No, sadly that's, not. Way to read between the lines, slacks. <laughs> really. Uh, I was playing you do anything? two fourteen-year-old kids and uh, and my girlfriend. So it was, my, my, <laughs> it was a tough yeah. game. Eat shit, kids. <laughs> <laughs> my my kids went trick or treating. It's catching on over here. Uh, a lot of people my age or older look at Halloween as a thing that is like a novelty, but all the kids over here embrace it fully. Like it's become. It's not as big as it is in the states. It probably never will be. But it's still. Okay. You go to the shops. It's all Halloween. We had to buy pumpkins. My kids knew the date it was going to be. They had it all in there. You know they were fucking ready. Halloween, Halloween. Look, they loved it. So it's catching on because it's money in it, right? So all the all the shops and everything are all about it. But fuck yeah. I mean. It, it's not. It's like the grown-up Halloween party is still kind of a novelty over here. I don't know any grown-ups that do it. They all, if you've got kids, you go trick or treat in the neighborhood. If it's a safe neighborhood, our neighborhood is full of kids. It's very safe, so it's like everybody went went out. I, I stayed in. I had to answer the door and give treats. I was watching the Rugby World Cup final, so I couldn't go out. Oh, it was good. Locked well in. done, Kiwis. Good job, Kiwis. Isn't that a sad part of your life where you're not old enough? Well, you're too old to trick or treat, but you don't have kids and you still want candy. Like, I want candy. You can go and buy it, Just go to Jake. the store and... They sell it in I shops. got money for that shit! <laughs> Especially when they're giving it out for free! So, I don't yeah. know. I, mean, I was thinking about, like, adopting a kid for, like, a couple of days, just to take him trick don't, or treat. Don't do that. that. By adopting, give you back. mean kidnap by any chance? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Forcibly adopting a child <laughs> and then giving them back later in a sack. Just take a cut but... of the candy. That's good. Yeah, That's man. Good stuff Alright, guys. I think it's time to wrap this with story time! No, Perfect. Slasher! Okay, yeah, Slasher retired from Dota. That's sad. Okay, story, story time. time! Here we go! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good transition, That's so... That's terrible. That's terrible. <laughs> Shannon, he didn't I think... retire. He didn't retire. Yeah, he's coming back. He's going to go Michael Jordan. He's going to come back and start his league career and then realize it's all about Dota and then come full circle. I feel like that happens yeah. so much. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. So, Shannon's got a fun story this week. Ted... This is a surprise. We probably should have prepped you ahead of time. Do you have a tell a story, a non-Dota related story for us that you could share that would make the world laugh? Nothing about sanding. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That made me laugh pretty pretty good, man. Um, oh, shucks. <laughs> yeah. So oh, you yeah, can think about it while. Can Shane. we hear yeah, Shannon's, Shannon, Shannon, Shannon first. Shannon's no doubt awesome story first, and I'll have a think. It's, uh, I've told this story before on my stream, but it's been a couple years. And it is disturbing, let me tell you. Oh, God. Is this Zayori last week disturbing? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> okay, this is more uh, a different This is a different kind of disturbing. Okay. I was just trying to get so you ready I for have Halloween. To, I have sucks. to preface this story with the fact that I lived with somebody, my best friend in college, freshman year, and he is the most disgusting person you'll ever meet, okay? And he has the libido of a horse, which means it's a good libido like oh. very strong libido he's full middle eastern i'm half somehow i didn't get those genes at all he jerks off five to ten times a day okay 
Not even an exaggeration. All right. This is going to be a jerk off story. So just to let you guys know in advance. I mean, I'm I'm ready. Bring on. It the looks semen. like Slacks is really prepared. For <laughs> okay, so in our dorm room, it's just me and him, and our room is so filthy because we are both. I mean, we're both disgusting. I'll fully admit. Uh, like there's literally just trash littered all over the floor. We never clean it. Um, he just leaves his food, like rotting meat. Like it's full on disgusting. So I, I typically okay. take really long showers and it's not to jerk off. It's because I just like to stand in the shower and just forget about the rest of my life. Okay. That's basically <laughs> what showers are for. <laughs> are you one of those shower criers? My dad used to cry in the no, shower. No, no, I don't, I don't cry in the shower. <laughs> I actually just end up sleeping most of the time. But anyway, I take really long showers and he would take this opportunity every night to go on like a jerk off marathon, right? So essentially, he just scheduled it. I was like, hey, you're going to take a shower? You're going to take a shower? Like, he's really wanting me to take a freaking shower so he can jerk off. Can so, I just ask for a second? Was it, yes. like, on the table how much he whacked it? Or was he, like, trying to keep it at least a little secret? No, no, no. He would, no he's fully open to this stuff. So he'd be like, you go take a shower. I'm going to whack off for an hour. Yes. Okay, he's okay. the most open. Like, I'm pretty damn open. He was way more open than me. He's probably the one that got me to be this transparent. Anywho, uh, taking a shower one night. No, oh, no, no. I'm sorry. I, I was really tired because I had a long day of school, of just sleeping through school. I don't know what the hell I was doing. And I wanted to go to bed early because I had a big test in the morning. Okay. And I didn't feel like taking a shower that day. Like, I don't know how you guys feel about daily showers. Sometimes you need them, sometimes you don't, I feel. I mean, especially you if you take it. If you live in yeah, Arizona, it, you live in Arizona, take a fucking shower. You well, it up. wasn't the summer. It wasn't the summer. It was Actually, it was winter. So it, it's like, uh, what, like 40 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit? I don't know what that is, Celsius, but... It, it's a cool breeze, you know. I take one every day. I live in Britain. It's literally sub-zero temperatures right. here year keep, round. Keep in mind, I'm a freshman in college. This is pretty normal to not You're take right. a shower every day. You're okay. right. Go for You're it. Right. Yeah. All right. Carry moving on. forward, I don't feel like taking a shower, and he's actually getting pretty pissed because he really wants to whack it, right? And we get into a little bit of a fight, and I'm like, just, I don't even give a shit. I'm not taking a shower so it can jerk off. I take a shower because I want to take a shower. I don't want you to control my life, okay? I go to sleep. <laughs> I wake up the next day, everything's normal, go to school, come back, it's basically the same thing, I end up taking a shower, you know, so you can jerk off, it's fine. Uh, the next day I wake up and I need to clean the place, like the place, it gets so disgusting, you gotta clean it a bit, so I'm literally taking rotting meat off of the floor, I'm cleaning mayonnaise that's spilled all over my freaking computer, and doing mayonnaise. all this shit, and fast forward one year, he... he we actually don't talk for like six months because I hate this kid at this. I literally hate him. That's how much he annoyed me. I would actually go home for the weekends because I couldn't stand being in the same room as him. We're on talking terms or speaking terms again, and he tells me, "Remember that that mayonnaise you you cleaned up on your computer?" Well, the the day after um, I got really mad at you for not taking a shower, I jerked off and I jizzed all over your computer. And you cleaned it up with your own hands. No. No. God. <laughs> Is that the end of the story? That the story, story had man. such a payload. My God. A payload. Literally. <laughs> literally. <laughs> oh. So that that's the story of me cleaning my roommate's jizz, and I have to, I have to reiterate how disgusting this guy is. Now keep in mind, the coup de gras, if you will, of this so story. You took a shower to wash it off your hands after you were done, knowing no, this that was, he was... I, I've learned a year later. Okay. So. Oh, this is afterwards. I see. Yeah. Keep in mind, this guy <laughs> is a man. doctor. <laughs> he is a doctor. Switch. He is not only a doctor, but he is literally in the top 1% of his class. He is a brilliant doctor that has jizzed on people's computers before. Can you Are imagine having a rage jerk-off? Like, he's literally thinking of me jizzing on the side of my computer case. <laughs> Can you imagine that, Zyari? Slacks. Anybody? That's just... I have never <laughs> been that mad that I've been like, you know what's really going to show this guy? A load of my spunk on his keyboard. <laughs> yep. Like, that's just never even crossed my mind. <laughs> well, now, Great now story, you know. bro. That's really... God. Congrats. Uh, Congrats. That's, the makers that, are coming that, up. That, that's like go. the next <laughs> That's like the next level rage is when you come on somebody. Oh! You know? Oh! Yes. Just in pure rage. What? That's that's true. 
It's like Karen, kind of you got a, you got a nice <laughs> sexual I, harassment. I, I it passed the does. statute of limitations, unfortunately. You're Birch. under arrest. Yeah. <laughs> you, you could go to jail for that. You could probably actually go to jail for that. No way. You could sue him for mental. You can't problems. go to jail for that, can you? Wait, wait, wait. It's sexual you nature, you, yeah. you don't think. That the, in America, there's a law somewhere about ejaculating on someone's computer <laughs> out of malice. You don't think you can find a lawsuit there? You can get sued for getting a cup of coffee that's hot. You okay, can look, sue look them for giving way. you hot coffee. You can no, sue no, them no. for fucking coming. If I went to McDonald's <laughs> with a computer in the back of my car and a disgruntled employee runs out and whacks it all over my computer case. <laughs> No law has been broken. I'm sorry. Right, hold on. If you found out about that a year later, then I don't think you can do it. The statute of limitations, I, mean, yeah, I no believe, problem. for ejaculation related crimes is 10 years. I think that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I all mean, right. all he has to do is deny it, and it's my word against a doctor. Like, who the you fuck did you mean? Did, didn't you save the cum for genetic sampling? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. it. You should have saved it and impregnated someone with it. Be like, yeah, that's the ultimate you revenge, stupid right there. Now that is sexual harassment, Slash. Got My you. God. Ooh. What? Impregnating someone with someone else's cum? Yeah, that's you're crossing barriers, dude. Jeez. All right, we, as gotta, long as you, we gotta shift. We gotta move on. Uh, period. All right, you Ted. Got a good story? You got a good story? Uh, maybe something a little lighter. <laughs> Jeez. A little lighter. I don't know. I'm lighter on the of... gravy. My Have stories are all super, story, super period. chill. A scary story. I it's mean... Halloween. You oh my god! No, no, okay. Perian, if you don't have a story, Slax actually has an amazing. No, ghost Perian, story. let's hear it. No, ghost story. Oh, it. not a okay. Slax <laughs> ghost story. He told us this story at uh, at the yeah, major qualifier, and it was it. fucking legit. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Why not? That's wait, my wait, story. Wait, 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 I don't want this shit on the What the Duck YouTube and Hold on. fucking. I have heard all of Slax's fucking ghost stories okay? <laughs> and is it the one about the deer is it the one about the deer yes, yeah i'm not gonna tell one. it don't worry yeah. about it Perry hates that fucking story why Perry do you hate that story because he as no he's telling it i'm like you gotta be fucking kidding me <laughs> like it's the worst story because it, what? It, it, it requires you to a believe in ghosts b believe anything that comes out of that man's mouth which is only a fool would believe and c Give a shit about a ghost deer coming back to haunt You're somebody. ruining it! You're ruining it! <laughs> yeah, good. Let's hear your stupid fucking no, deer ghost you've story. No, I'm, I'm not telling it. It's like 15 minutes long. I don't... That's... Next time. Next oh time. Man, Slack oh, whoa, 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 whoa. super serious all of a sudden. Did you tell the one about the horse? Oh, enchanted uh, the horse. one? <laughs> you guys want to hear... No, I but period, love... you're supposed to... I don't think I've heard that story. story. I've got nothing that can top All that. Alright. <laughs> I love this story. Uh, this All is right. one of my favorites. This is a good this one. This is the story of my horse, enchanted one. <laughs> oh, no. enchanted one. I forgot the name. Enchanted <laughs> one. Alright, go on. Okay. <laughs> So, back in the day, my dad was, uh, he grew up in New York and stuff. He was always a New Yorker, and he always dreamed of being a uh, cowboy. You know, that was like his thing. He, I was actually named after a horse. My dad went riding, and his horse was Jake in Colorado. And he named me Jake after that Plains fucking horse. Cool. So, uh, at least it wasn't a donkey. Um, so, he moves the family out for a midlife crisis. He wants to be a cowboy, my dad. Moving in this house, got two acres. And um, he's like, yeah, we're just gonna, we're gonna, like, Cowboys in Colorado, and we're like, all right. So we move out here. Time goes on, nothing really happens, and we used to repair old muscle cars. So we'd drive around old people's neighborhoods looking for shitty muscle cars to repair and resell. And uh, one day, we happen upon this house. It's got a horse in the front yard. This poor thing. I mean, it's got, there's a pen around it, and it's only as big as the horse. It has like barbed wire in the fence, and it's like super abused. There's like horse hair in the barbed wire. We're like, oh my God. This poor horse. We have to save it. So I go up to the guy. We're like, how much for this horse in your front yard, man? And he's like, just take it. It's yours. We're like, all right, great. We're going to save this horse. We're going to rehabilitate this horse. That horse was the fucking devil. <laughs> so we load this horse up on the trailer. We drive it home. We let it loose in the yard. And we're, he starts running around the whole yard screaming. Like, nah, yeah. We're like, oh, he's just getting used to it. He'll be done. It never stopped. It was like a week and a half, and he was still running around kicking shit, going, <laughs> we couldn't stop. Anyway, this horse was out of his fucking mind. We uh, tried to feed it. One time we gave it a carrot. 
We're like, come here, come here. Its name was Enchanted One. We're like, come here, Enchanted One. And walk up to us, nibble on the carrot, turn around, and then try to kick the shit out of us. It was nuts. And we did everything we could to rehabilitate this horse. And uh, it wouldn't work. We had trainers come over. They said, the horse, we can't help it. We don't know what's wrong with it. it it's just nuts. So eventually, one day I come home. My dad, <laughs> one day I come home with this horse. I look out in the field, my dad has a 300, 357 Magnum pointed to this for horse's forehead. I'm like, Dad, what are you doing? And he's like, he kicked me, son. I'm killing the horse. <laughs> I'm like, no, Dad, you can't do this here. The neighbors are gathering. People are like, oh, my God. And the horse is just, for once in his life, it's not moving. It's just like, do it, fucker. Do it. Like, it's staring him in the face. And my dad's just got this pistol. And I'm like, Dad, there's another way. There's another way. So we're trying to figure out something to do with this horse. Eventually, we call the wolf rescue. And it, it turns out they'll take a horse to feed it to wolves. Go out there and we're like, Enchanted One, you have one more chance. You have to be a good horse. I mean, we the horse rescue people came. They couldn't take it. It was too crazy. We're like, Enchanted One, you have to be a, a good horse. And it just went ballistic. You like kicked a hole in the barn. We're like, all right, fuck you. You go on the wolf rescue. They pick him up. Four cowboys tie both of his legs. They put him in the thing. And there he goes. That was the end Enchanted one, the most magical, crazy ass horse ever was. Period. So he no. got eaten by wolves. He got eaten by wolves. They sent him on the wolf. <laughs> they that, they do that. Is that the end of the story? I mean, yeah, it's a sad story. Why do you like that story so much, Beard? <laughs> I, I I feel like justice is done at the end. I like the <laughs> I like the dream of the father. Like we're gonna be cowboys, son, and it's shut down. It's like. <laughs> An allegory for for the American dream in a way. I I just feel it's got it all. The man, <laughs> the horse. This story sucks. I'm just picturing your dad holding this horse at gunpoint. Uh, have you ever thought about what to do with a horse corpse? They're fucking heavy, man. Once you pop it yeah. in the brains, it's gonna be on your lawn for the next. Feed it to wolves, man. Couple days. I don't know. You have to fly we in the wolves had to weird eat it. Horses, man. We got a replacement horse called Tex, and he was this great big thoroughbred, and he loved killing rabbits. He would run around and see a rabbit, and then he'd run over and go. <laughs> and just stomp on him all day. I don't know what the fuck his problem was. Great horse, though. What did you guys do with these horses, man? You know, my family owns <laughs> horses, and we've never we had fed experiences. We them fucking crack all day. Like this with these no. horses that are just mad murderers. My God. <laughs> no, nah, man, I was up in the mountains with that horse, and I was riding around, and there was a rattlesnake, and it's like, Kss! and I'm like, oh, shit. Don't let the horse see it. Don't let the horse see it. And the horse looks at it, and then it's just like, <laughs> just smack the shit out of its head. I was like, holy shit, this horse is so cool. This is the best horse ever. Crazy. Well, it's pretty anticlimactic. You guys are so what? What's wrong? <laughs> no, you. I mean, you, your delivery. Shock, honestly, your delivery fell off a bit. The way you did, did it? it at Dream League was better because you forgot the the rattlesnake thing. You forgot. You mentioned it briefly. The fact that uh, the horse Ruined rescue it. came and couldn't bring it. They couldn't. Or couldn't take you know. it. And then you, the very end, you didn't really specify. You didn't. You didn't bring it home enough with the wolves eating the actual Why horse. the fuck did yeah, you name it, it Enchanted One? It was close, though. What? Why the fuck did you name it Enchanted One? What kind of a name we is that? We did it! That was its name! <laughs> it came with that name? Yes. They probably named it that so somebody would take it off the head. Exactly. It can't be that bad. It's named Enchanted One, you know? Oh, it's such Whatever. a good horse. Wow. All right, well, we need somebody to save this episode. I fucked up Suns fan's story. No, it was, it was the still worst good. Story I, I thought it was still okay. <laughs> I don't, I don't have any like outrageous stories. I mean, I've got stories, but they're not like they're just kind of average shit. Have you happen. ever ridden a horse, Ted? Yeah, yeah, I rode a horse. Like, uh, I went on holiday to. Um, my dad lives in uh, in the states. He at one time I lived in New York, and we went on a holiday uh, over there, and we went upstate and rode horses. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> all right, no, all right. No, nothing all right, cool. There. That topped it all, guys. Yeah, Sick got story. It. We got it. All right, well, you guys want to hear a gist? And answered. Like, you want a gist story? I could top Shannon's gist story. Oh boy. All right. I can do it. We've got time right, for one more story, one. Slacks. One more story. This will be a good one. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this is the legend of the Cum Cove. Are you ready? <laughs> Here we go. Back in the day, I used to be a resident advisor at my college, as I've told you guys before. And on winter break, we had to go into these rooms and make sure that everybody, you know, took out all their trash, unplugged everything, because the school didn't want to waste money on people leaving. So, um, going around, and there's this one room, and uh, it was in the overcapacity dorm that year. And there were six girls in this room. And I'm not trying to be sexist. I'm not trying to be offensive. In fact, I think saying this makes me a feminist. These girls were sluts. 
they would <laughs> just hump anything on the door. And that was like their thing. They put all their room, their beds together and they're like, just come on in and we'll sex you. We don't give a shit. And that's great. If you want to sex everybody, go for it. Go nuts. So these six girls put all their beds together and made like just this orgy room. And everybody knew. It was like not a mystery. We're just like, don't touch the bed. Don't go near the bed. And they put it on these uh, cinder blocks. And it was like standing up. It had all these lights around it. It was just like a sex lounge. And people were like, all right, nuts. And we go into that room. Me and my partner, Joel. He was my RA partner. We always go in two in case people attacked us. So me and Joel are in that room. We're checking it out. And I noticed there's some Christmas lights under the bed. I'm like, ah, shit. We got to unplug those. We try to reach around. Now there's six beds on the wall. We can't reach the cord. It's in the middle of the bed, uh, under the bed. And I was like, all right, I'll go, I'll go take it off. I'm crawling under the bed. And I reach for the light. As I'm reaching there, as my hand goes towards the light, I look on the side of, they put all these pillows and blankets down there. There's just this big white crunchy stain next to the plug. And I go, oh no. I look down and all the sheets on the ground jizz everywhere there was jizz everywhere and i scream out to joel i say joel help it's a cum cove they fuck <laughs> under the bed joel they fuck under the bed and joel's like get out of there get out of there and i pull the light out and it's just darkness because all the lights are out and there's they, there's curtains on the side of the bed there's no way out and i'm crawling and with every movement i hear and i'm like joel it's everywhere help me and he's like i get out man get out I was lost in that cum cove for so long. <laughs> when I crawled out of there, I could, I was covered. I took a shower. I cried. <laughs> oh my god! It was the worst. To no, know, to to know, and then in a panic to pull out the light and be trapped in that hell. There was no way out. Sometimes when I dream, I'm back there in the cum cove. <laughs> <laughs> that's I love I love the way you, you shout to Jake it's a cum cove and he instantly <laughs> knows well, get out cum cove wait get out Jake <laughs> there you oh go. there's my a better God. story than enchanted one there what, what are the chances that six girls would just be like let's let's, let's turn our room let's into start a, a brothel prostitution <laughs> no no dude it was a weird dorm it was a weird dorm, but uh, I mean, statistically, what? it's gonna happen eventually, and it's probably gonna happen to him. And, so. and Jake found it, I guess. Yeah, and, yeah. and what school did you go to again, Slacks? This sounds like uh... I, I went to CU Boulder, and that dorm was called College Inn. It was for the over uh, over capacity. They actually tore it down after my last year. I can't. Uh, thank God. <laughs> can yeah, only imagine gone. why. Yeah, actually, that building was filled of asbestos. When you came in, you had to sign a form and it, saying that you wouldn't sue. I got to be in charge of de designing the t-shirts, and I said, college in, we do as best as we can. Hey! <laughs> hey! <laughs> That's but, pretty uh, good. No. And awful. God damn it. That place was a fucking... Uh, it, right. was a, it was a cum cove. It was a cum cove. That's what we need to know. Gentlemen. All right. Boy. Well, that's it for the show. <laughs> yeah, that's a wrap, guys. All right. Well done. We'll be back next week. Purian Flax, thank you so much for joining us. Always a pleasure, my friend, Purge. Nice to see you as well. Guys, we'll be back next time for another episode of What the Duck. We'll see you later.